My name is Dr. Alan Klein. I'm the director of the Center for the Diagnosis and Treatment of Pericardial Diseases at the Cleveland Clinic. And it's my great pleasure talking about pericarditis. And I think this field is very um, exciting. Um, at this moment, there's a explosion of publications on pericarditis. In particular, um, you have advanced imaging that helps diagnose pericarditis, and now you have uh, therapeutics, such as the uh, IL-1 blockers, Rolanicept, in the treatment. Uh, patients are coming here uh, for these new uh, imaging and, and treatments. So let me start at the, at the beginning. Uh, what is pericarditis? Pericarditis is the um, inflammation of the sac around the heart. And we've come a long way from the from an old diagnosis for, for many years, used EKG and clinical criteria to, as I mentioned, advanced imaging, and what we call complicated pericarditis. Um, there's many clinical syndromes for pericarditis, including acute and recurrent pericarditis, uh, pericardial fusion, uh, constrictive pericarditis, effusive constriction, masses in the pericardium, and um, diverticulum of the pericardium and cysts as well. With regard to most of the patients coming to, to see us at our pericardial center, uh, the most common would be probably acute and recurrent pericarditis. And let's go over uh, what this means. So acute pericarditis means is that you get, let's say, a viral illness and the sac becomes very, very inflamed. And most of the time, um, this, uh, this acute episode um, uh, goes away and you never see the doctor. But sometimes it becomes recurrent. That means that the acute episode gets better for around four to six weeks, and then um, it, it comes back, so that you call that recurrent pericarditis. Another term that people use is incessant pericarditis. That means that for the first three months, the acute episode doesn't get better, so it's nonstop incessant, which may be a little more aggressive. And after three months, it becomes chronic. Um, so acute and recurrent pericarditis would be the most common. And then uh, other things that we would see probably be constrictive pericarditis when the sac gets hardened and thickened and patients get uh, shorter breath, get so-called heart failure. And uh, often this is treated uh, surgically and occasionally uh, with medical therapy. Uh, what do we have here at Cleveland Clinic? We have a pericardial center of excellence where the concept that's multidisciplinary where patients could come for one to two days and see the cardiologist and then see different uh, subspecialties, such as rheumatology, um, see adva uh, get advanced imaging, including MRI and echo, uh, collect any bloods that are necessary for uh, assessing pericarditis, uh, sometimes see the surgeon, uh, have a heart catheterization to measure pressure. So within one to two days, uh, the patients will get their diagnosis and the proper uh, management going forward. Uh, so this is quite unique. What are some of the symptoms for pericarditis? Um, these, uh, these include, as I mentioned, probably, uh, chest pain. Chest pain, when you take a deep breath, uh, it hurts, and you, uh, you have to sit forward, and when you lie back, it hurts even more. Often goes to the uh, left shoulder. And another common thing would be uh, signs of heart failure, shortness of breath, ankle swelling, uh, belly swelling. Uh, in the U.S., uh, the most common cause would be uh, idiopathic or viral pericarditis. So you get a, a flu-like illness, you get a cold, uh, and you get um, a pericarditis. Um, if you live in India or a developing world, the most common cause would be tuberculosis. Uh, we don't see too much tuberculosis here, but as I mentioned, um, after a viral illness would be the most common. And then you have a non-infectious causes. And probably the most common cause would be post-cardiac injury syndrome. Uh, that includes if you have open heart surgery, uh, uh, let's say valve replacement, aorta surgery, uh, valve repair, uh, you can um, sometimes get pericarditis from that. Uh, also after, um, for example, electrophysiologic procedures, an AFib ablation, a VT, a VT ablation, you may get uh, pericarditis. Uh, other causes that we would see would be um, autoimmune such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, can cause pericarditis. And finally, uh, neoplastic disease. If there's cancer, sometimes that can invade the pericardium and um, you would uh, get pericarditis. 
Uh, some, what are some of the risk factors for developing what we call complicated pericarditis? Uh, and complicated per pericarditis means that after the acute episodes, you get uh, recurrent pericarditis, which is, uh, occurs in a third of the patients. Uh, roughly 6% of uh, patients have multiple recurrences. Uh, and some patients have colchicine-resistant, steroid-dependent, and some develop constrictive pericarditis. So this complicated pericarditis is what we see here, here at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and we try to treat that accordingly. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the treatment and management, uh, we use um, the European Society of Cardiology guidelines, and that's a stepwise approach. So if you have acute um, or recurrent pericarditis, the first line would be uh, NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen or naproxen or aspirin, uh, with colchicine. Uh, the second line, uh, if you fail the first line, then often you go to um, low-dose uh, steroids, as in prednisone. Um, and uh, that combination is called triple therapy, NSAID, colchicine, and prednisone. But we tell the patients to restrict their exercise because exercise is good for the heart in general, but bad for the inflamed pericardium. And then a uh, third line would be uh, things like uh, biologics, uh, Anakinra, uh, Rolanacept, IVIG, methotrexate, or azathioprine. And the fourth line would be uh, pericardiectomy. And this is uh, now changing because of the uh, new um, advances in therapeutics. I'd like to mention uh, the two advances would be, uh, for example, the interleukin blockers. Similar to when you have uh, allergies, you take antihistamines. With, uh, with pericarditis, you get inflammation. Uh, and um, you get uh, production, increased production of the interleukin pathway, interleukin 1, alpha, and beta. And now we have targeted therapy, uh, including anakinra, which is a uh, biologic, as well as rolanicept. Uh, we did a very important trial um, in the last year called the, uh, the Rhapsody trial. Not Bohemian Rhapsody, but just regular Rhapsody, and that was presented as a late-breaking trial at the American Heart Association and uh, uh, published online in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this led to the uh, approval of the uh, Rolanicept uh, by the FDA in March uh, of this year. So now that you have a FDA-approved um, uh, therapeutics for recurrent pericarditis, and people are coming here uh, to get put on uh, this proper therapy. The outlook is, is, uh, is quite good for uh, recurrent pericarditis if you catch it early. Uh, the biggest mistake that we see here is that the acute episode is, un is not recognized properly, and, it's, and if, when recognized, it's undertreated. And patients come here with multiple recurrent pericarditis episodes. Uh, they're often stuck on the prednisone. Uh, they can't get off the colchicine. And then when they come here, we would do, um, we could take a good history, examine the patient, but we, we would do our advanced imaging, uh, try to figure out um, um, how... Uh, advanced it is or uh, how acute it is and recommend uh, the proper therapy. Now, one thing that I should mention is that the um, uh, MRI is very, very useful because it can prognosticate how bad the severity is and how many months to years you may need uh, to be put, put on therapy. Let me mention very briefly about uh, COVID and the vaccination. So COVID itself, COVID-19 can um, affect the lungs and it does affect the heart. Uh, and can cause a, uh, a mild pericarditis, inflammation of the muscle or, or the lining. Uh, it's not that common. Um, it's probably uh, less than 10% um, uh, incidence. Um, and um, another, um, another important point is that now the mRNA vaccines, uh, such as with Pfizer and Moderna, uh, can rarely cause uh, a myocarditis or mild pericarditis. And the, the certain uh, phenotype or a certain person that gets this would be a young 20-year-old uh, male um, that has a lot of testosterone, and testosterone may play, may play some role, and they can get uh, a myocarditis, pericarditis. And usually this is uh, very, very self-limited, very self-limited and goes away over time. And the treatment is very, very similar to treating um, um, recurrent pericarditis from, from other causes. So in summary, I think uh, there's a lot of excitement in this field of pericarditis. As I mentioned, we have the advanced imaging and new uh, therapeutics in treating this um, uh, problematic disease.
Thank you very much.